In today's video, I'm going to show you split toning. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I'm super excited about today's video. I'm going to show you how to do this thing called split toning. And if you don't know what that is, then I'm doubly excited for you because I think that you're about to learn something that is just gonna blow your mind. Seriously, this, uh, when you learn how to do this, it just changes your whole perspective on photography and the way that you edit your photographs. Uh, it's one of those things that for some reason, I think people uh, either don't talk about it or they wanna keep it a secret because it, uh, it's a way that you can style your photographs in such a unique way that it almost looks like you're putting uh, a preset or a filter on it, but you're gonna be able to have full control uh, over the whole process. And, uh, and I'm gonna show you exactly how easy it is to do this inside of Lightroom. Now, before we jump into Lightroom, I just wanna cover off what split toning actually is. So a tone is basically an overlay, a color overlay that you place uh, over the top of a uh, picture. So if I was to put, say, an orange overlay on top of this video, it would look like this. And if I was to put a blue one, it would look like this. And split toning simply means that you're going to put two of those on top of your photographs, but you're not gonna put one on top of the other because that would just simply cancel each other out and you just end up with a different color. What we're gonna do is we're going to apply it on uh, based on luminosity. That is, we're going to apply a tone to the highlights or the bright parts of a photograph, and then we're going to add a different color to the shadows or the darker parts of a photograph. Now, if you've never seen that before, it's probably very difficult to imagine what that would look like. So instead of me just yapping on about it, let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom and I am working on, it should be 11.2 and yep, 11.2, uh, which is the current version as of March, 2022, okay? Uh, now the interface, for doing split toning has uh, changed, I think it was about a year and a half ago. You can do it with all the versions of Lightroom. It'll just look a little bit different, but the concept is exactly the same, but it, the interface will look a little bit different if you're running an older version, but um, anything in the last you know year is going to look like what I'm about to show you now. So we talked about split toning and how we are going to apply different tones uh, to a photograph and we're going to add them to different parts of the photograph and the way we're going to split them is we're going to use the highlights the shadows and the mid-tones and we are going to uh, apply a different tone to each one of those parts of the photograph now you see this done a lot in fashion because um, when people are applying a preset often what happens when you put in a filter say on instagram or, or anything like that uh, with fashion, it's very popular to do split toning. So this is what uh, gets you some of those uh, effects where a photograph may look like an old film sort of exposure, that, that, that sort of film look. Uh, it's often, it's done this way by doing split toning. So with fashion, it's very popular, but I've got a couple of photographs. I've got a fashion photograph, and then I've got a uh, landscape photo as well. So I'm going to show you how it also applies to that. It's just a really cool way to apply uh, or to, to give it a bit of a, a dynamic look, a very unique sort of look. So let's open up, first of all, the um, this picture here of a model that I photographed. Funny enough, it came up in my feed, my Facebook feed. I took this shot um, just over 10 years ago. So uh, what I've done is I've reset the uh, photograph so this is straight out of camera this is what it looked like and obviously i'm using we're using a lot of flash here this was part of a workshop that we did um and i managed to snap this photograph now um what we want to do in what, what i'm going to do in in this particular case you don't have to do anything or follow any specific rules this is purely an artistic um thing that we're going to do because we're going to uh we're going to make it look very sort of almost unnatural okay uh but it's still uh, it's something that looks cool. So let's go into the develop module. So we're going to go into the develop module. And as you can see, all the sliders are all reset because, again, this is uh, straight out of the camera. And, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the bottom here on the right-hand side. And we're going to go to this color grading section. Now, if yours is closed, uh, it could look like that. If it says color grading, just click on the little triangle there, and that's going to expand it. And there's a couple of different views that you can... Um, that you can display or, or, or work in here. You've got the uh, these little three circles up here that are like in a little pyramid. Um, 
and then you've also got these individual ones over here as well we're going to work on this little um the pyramid version uh all it does really is just it presents uh it presents the 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 sliders in a, in a different manner okay but that's that's the only difference really uh all the everything else is uh is pretty much uh, available in there for you so what you can see is that when you click on this little pyramid you get three wheels here these are color wheels and they're labeled up on the top you see what the, the top one says mid-tones and then down the bottom you've got shadows and highlights and this is where we uh where we apply the uh, tone to a specific section of the photograph now with a photograph like this one the one thing that I really don't want to uh, mess around with too much is the skin color the skin color should be orange okay and uh, it'll look really unnatural if I start putting a tone that affects the color of her skin we're going to mess around with it a little bit but we don't want to go too crazy but the rest of the photograph the sky uh, you know the beach all of that it that's that's available for you to you know to to do whatever you want with it i mean in fact the whole photograph you can do whatever you want with it it's purely an artistic thing but something that i would recommend is always just watch your highlights uh, watch your your skin tones because uh, that's the one thing where uh, it can make the photograph look amateurish if you uh, if you change the skin to look uh, too weird so let's start off with the shadows because the brightest part of the photograph here is the model herself so her skin so what I want to do with the shadows, which is going to include a little bit of the sky, even though you know you can see some white clouds in there, it's still compared to the skin, it's much much darker. So what we're going to do is we I want to uh, make the background look a lot bluer than it actually is. So then what I would do is uh, I would start onto the shadows, and there's a little circle inside of the color wheel. Now all I have to do is I have to drag this circle by clicking and holding and then i can drag it to anywhere inside of uh the the color wheel okay and you're going to see there's a, a a tiny dot a colored dot uh, around the outside of the wheel and that just is an easier way to see exactly which color i'm applying onto that uh onto that section of the photograph so in this case what i want to do is i want to go into the blues okay uh, as you can see there as i'm moving around you can see that the photograph is changing color now the skin is not changing color too much okay because what we're doing is we're actually affecting the shadows only all right so what we're going to do is in this particular case i want to change that to a blue now there's a couple of little a couple of ways to navigate on this wheel okay uh, once you set the color okay uh, what you can do is you can apply more or less color by uh, clicking on the center wheel and then the outside you can actually fine tune that blue so for my particular taste what i want to do is i want to take it into that blue there and maybe just give it a little bit more okay a little bit more blue so now that the shadows uh the, the um the, the the sky and the clouds are starting to look really blue i could go much bluer than that but i think that that's starting to look a little bit too much so i'm just going to back off just a little bit okay so i'm just going to leave that there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to experiment with the highlights uh that's probably good her skin is probably going to um you know fall under the highlights so it is the you know the brightest part of uh, of the photograph but uh we'll probably do a combination of between mid-tones and highlights but let's start off with the highlights so i'm going to click on the uh on the center wheel and i'm going to drag that over to the orange okay and we can fine tune this a little bit later on okay and uh, that's looking quite good it's been quite strong but uh i'm going to just back off just a little bit there okay and then with the with the mid-tones if i'm not quite sure which part of the photograph the mid-tones is going to affect i just pick it up and, and just move it to something funky like you know this uh pink color here so you can see that it affects most of the color because there's a lot of that photograph that would qualify as a mid-tone Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually do too much with that, although I do like a little bit of green in the mid-tones. I think it's quite looks quite nice. Much it's a tiny little bit, so I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, now um, let's see where we started off. Now before we do that, let's go into the snapshot, and we're going to create a snapshot, and we're going to call it after. Okay, and then we're going to reset the photograph just to see what it what we started off. So that's what we started off with. In fact, let's do a snapshot called before. Okay, and we can switch easily between these two here. So we've got the before and we've got the after, which I think looks a lot nicer. It's got that sort of fake, you know, 
film look to it. Um, it looks like someone's applied a preset to it, and I think it looks really nice. So that's the first example of using split toning. So now let's see how we, we would use exactly the same technique on something uh, like a uh, landscape photograph. Again, this is uh, straight out of camera, as you can see. Uh, there's nothing in here. This is the, everything set to zero. Okay. Um, now, uh, this is in a place called Mudgee in New South Wales in Australia. And again, this was probably, this was taken um, probably about four or five years ago. So what I want to do here is I want to bring up the shadows just a little bit, just so we can see what we're working with. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down a little bit, right? Because I really want to capture that sky. Now, I can tell you that the sky looked a lot more uh, yellow than it looks in there. So this then becomes very easy for me to control just the highlight sections, which is the, the basically the sky. Uh, I can go down to the uh, color grading section. And for this one, I'm probably just going to work with the highlights. And I'm going to drag this all pretty much almost all the way to the yellow. Okay. And what that does is it's just applying that yellow tone. You can go a little bit more orange, actually, I think. Actually, no, the yellow looks nicer, actually. And um, and I don't think I need to do anything in, else in here because I think that that yellow would actually have a... It would wash over a little bit in the shadows as well. Uh, but if I do apply it on the shadows, it might look a little bit too much. Uh, so I do still want to have some color contrast in there. So I think that that looks quite nice in there. And maybe I can... Uh, bring down the highlights just a, a tap in more and then maybe bring the brightness of, of the photograph there up. Um, and um, let's see. Uh, which I'll leave the contrast the way it was. But um, I think that that probably looks a lot nicer. So I'm introducing that yellow where it would naturally appear in real life, which is really just in the sunlight. The sunlight is what's yellow. Everything else... Um, you know, it's still the same color. So uh, maybe just a little bit of vibrance in here as well, just to highlight again that afternoon um, golden hour. And uh, and that's pretty much all I would do on this photograph. Um, but again, it's just a really e good... The color grading does two things, really. Number one is it allows you to be creative with it. So you can experiment with this and you can get some really funky, you know, funky results. I mean, I, you know, I mean, let's move the shadows to something else, right? So I can move the shadows to there and make it look almost like an old film stock, okay? Um, so you can get really creative with it. And then the second thing is when you're trying to uh, fix a photograph to make it as accurate as, as possible. So if you wanted to just change the highlights or the shadows and color correct those things, then this allows you to do it really, really easily. Now, in Photoshop, you can take this and you can actually split them into more than three. Here, you've only got highlight shadows and midtones. In uh, in Photoshop, of course, you've got way more control and you can have as many as you want. But these really are pretty much going to cover you 99% of the time. Now, there are some sliders down here that uh, I didn't talk about. So let me just go back to that other photograph for a second. Um So uh, in here, what you have down the bottom is you've got the blending. Now, the blending... What it does is it's uh, how it blends uh, the effect from the shadows to the midtones. Okay, that, so there's no, it's not just uh, it doesn't just cut over from from shadows to 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 midtones uh, in you know in one value. It it, it does like a, a gradual change, and this is what that blending is. That is just the blending. Okay, and uh, the strength of it and. Um, and then the other thing is down here you've got is the balance, and the balance is that do you want to shift the uh, effect more towards the shadows or more towards the highlight or the or the midtones in this case so you could do this to, so you can ap apply more of the shadow effect or more of the highlight effect so this just resets it so that you're not uh, at the middle okay you're leaning more towards one of those colors one of those tones whether it be the highlights or whether it be the shadows and then over here um, you've got the lumin luminosity Okay, so as you can see, as I move this up and down, you'll see that there's an L here. Uh, there it is. At the moment is set to six. That's the luminosity, so that's the brightness. Okay, so I could also make things darker and brighter uh, by and only be affecting either the highlight, the shadow, or the uh, or the midtones. So again, you get a lot of control with it. And as I mentioned before, you can click on any one of these win uh, on uh, the individual. Um, uh, 
circles up here and all you're doing is just uh, zooming in so you can do work on one of those at a time but i like working on this one because it allows me to fine tune really quickly uh, between the different uh, the different uh, splits of a photograph uh, and which i think is much more efficient so that is split toning i hope you enjoy this again the first time that i've discovered this it just blew my mind because i was you know i was able to really um, style images uh, like i've seen in magazine and magazines and never been able to work out exactly how it is that they do it but this is the way to do it and i hope you have fun with it i want to see what you come up with so if you do experiment with this and you get some really cool shots then please uh, send me a link uh, and and let me know um I'd, I'd love to uh, see what kind of results you get and again if you've got any questions uh leave them in the comment section below and i'll be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have now, if you're enjoying this video or you're finding it useful, please don't forget to click the like button. It makes a massive difference to me and it's the best way for you to be able to support me. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do so. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And don't forget about ministryofphoto.com. That's my website where you're going to find a lot of tutorials and uh, you'll also find things such as reviews, and some downloads uh, such as Lightroom presets. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. So that's split toning. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did the first time that I came across it. Um, I think it just really just blew my mind and all of my pictures just look different from that point onwards. And I'd be really interested to find out uh, what you guys think. And also if you're using it, I'd love to see samples of your work. So if you wanna leave uh, links in, your comment, in the comment section below, please make sure that you do. Also, if you've got any questions, again, the, the section below in the comments area, that's probably the best place to put those questions. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. Uh, you're going to find all the links uh, in the description below. Again, guys, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.